Disclaimer. This video is not a how-to video. I'm not a professional, I'm not a luthier, I'm not a painter, a carpenter, and anything really. Whilst I project to a small degree that I'm knowledgeable and that I'm experienced and that I know what I'm doing, the truth is I don't. If you intend to view this video, beware. This, the techniques, the discussion, the entire project is performed by an amateur. And most importantly, it's performed by someone who, during the recording at least, was going through a bit of a mental crisis. This is not a how-to video. This is serving as a form of therapy for someone who is desperately trying to stay afloat. Someone who is discovering who he is. And by someone who, for once, is trying to be honest. And who is not pretending to be someone he is not. If this sounds like it isn't for you, then switch off and go and watch a video by someone who knows what they're doing and can present a really nice looking instrument at the end of the process. Um, if you want to watch something that is warts and all and quite cringeworthy, then continue watching. Um, with that being said, um, I hope you do enjoy this and uh, let's begin. I wanted to make a guitar for playing metal. I wanted it to have 24 frets and two humbuckers. That's it. I decided it on an Ibanez Wizard 3 neck from an S-Series guitar. The Wizard 2 is like my all-time favourite neck ever, and I love how the S-Series guitars generally had funkier inlays compared to its RG counterpart, so it seemed like an obvious choice. I managed to get an unloaded one for a really good price on eBay. The body is from an Ibanez Geo. It's made for a 24 fret neck, and the scale of the model is 25.5 like the S-Series neck I have, and as you can see, it's a simple two humbucker route with a hardtail bridge. I rough sanded the body down, and primed it, ready to apply some colour. I decided on a bright green for the body colour. I got some of this neon green paint and started applying it onto the body. After I was done applying the green, I let it dry for 24 hours, and as you can see it looked pretty badass. I then applied some gloss finish. The can said it would be dry in 24 hours. Sweet, I thought. However, this was where my problems began. As you will see in this shot, there is a big ass thumbprint in the finish. Obviously this is not good. The other issue that I had was that the hanger I was using had dug into the heel during the drying process, causing this rather unsightly mess. So 640 days into the project, I've had to sand it all back again because I fucked up with the uh, polyurethane and it pulled and left some really bad marks. Hopefully you can see that. I can't see shit because it's too fucking bright. But... And I dropped it for good measure so I've had to sand and buff that out because I'm a fucking idiot. But hey ho, let's start again. It's safe to say that I was getting a little bit stressed out at this point. The need to resand and respray would set me back a few more days. And at the time, I didn't really have a lot of patience. Well, rough sanded, at least. So I can apply some paint again. If I liked the relic to look, it would actually be pretty fucking cool. But I don't, so to start again. <sighs> so as before, I resprayed the green, I resprayed the lacquer, this time I just left it for a lot longer, I thought I'm just going to leave it for a lot longer than the 24 hours the can said, and hopefully when I come back to it, it's all going to be super shiny and really nice and ready to go. Just giving it a good buff, it feels pretty smooth now, just nice. It was really, really smooth to the touch, I will say. There's still a few errors. Um, so it has a little bit of a wrinkly kind of a look to it. So, and also a fly decided to, um, can I get that to focus? A little fly decided to uh, land just as it was drying. So I've managed to buff him out, but oh well. I've decided to call this, oh, zooming in. Decided to call this finish um, Rotting Green Apple because, well, one, it's got a dead fruit fly on it, and two, because it has this sort of withered, wrinkly look like a rotting apple. So, um, 
Yeah. Whilst I tried to play off the finish issue as a cool effect, the reality was it wasn't very cool. It was fucked. I had once again tried to rush the process, and the reality was the finish hadn't actually had time to cure properly once again. It was at this point I started to get pretty annoyed with myself, and if I'm honest I don't quite remember exactly what happened, but things went from bad to worse rather quickly, and, uh, well, just watch. That's the slight possibility that I'm going mental. I don't really know what the fuck I'm doing anymore. This can be the uh, inside out Will Smith jacket guitar. I think it needs more purple. It was at this point I realised two things. One, the purple looked really, really cool. And two, I'm going to have to restart this thing from scratch. The issue with the finish I was having is purely that I wasn't being patient enough. Uh, and even though the spray cans that you buy says that it will be cure or, you know, solid and nice and dry within 24 hours, that just isn't the case. Um, I knew that. I'd read a lot of forums and done spray painting before and I knew this wasn't the case. But at the time of doing this, I wasn't really in the best headspace and I was just trying to rush it. Simple as that. So this time around, I thought I'm going to strip it completely back to the bare wood and just do it properly this time around. Take the time, get it done properly. How I should have done it the first time around. So the body was now ready for priming, painting and finishing once again. I didn't film too much of this process as I just genuinely forgot to. I really wanted to focus on doing it as well as I could this time around rather than trying to create some sort of flashy looking video. It reached a point where I was happy with the result. It was far from perfect, but I was actually willing to accept the result this time around and quit whilst I was ahead. And uh, I really do love this colour. I think it's turned out really, really nice. I opted for all black hardware on this build. I think it looks really, really cool against the purple. I always shield the cavities of my guitars just to try and help us reduce as much noise as possible. Uh, if you do do this, just make sure you add a ground wire to the copper too, and be careful because the copper tape can be quite sharp. I had a set of Seymour Duncan Invaders laying around, so they were used for this instrument. I love the bridge pickup, it's a really really great pickup. Um, the neck I'm not overly keen on, but it's been a while since I've used it, so maybe my opinion is different now, we'll see. The controls for the instrument are simple. One volume, a three-way switch, and just a mini toggle so I can coil split the neck. I do like the sound of a single coil in the neck position, so this gives me the flexibility of having that and full humbucker sound. So these are the, some of the things that you don't see in these sort of videos. Um, the hole for the volume I've had to drill out to make the diameter wider. Um, so I've done that, so it fits the potentiometer. Ooh. Sorry. So it fits, it fits the uh, potentiometer width that I've got, diameter I should say. Uh, the trouble is the um, potentiometer that I purchased, which was actually quite a, an expensive, nice quality one, uh, the shaft isn't long enough to fit through um, the body. So, um, yeah, I need to buy a new pot with a really long shaft. Uh, you know. I always say measure twice, cut once, and I didn't actually take my own advice with this, I just presumed it would work. I think I just got excited and wanted to put it together. It's the same thing for this little on on switch here that I'm using as a going to be using as a coil split. In this case it was the opposite thing. The, the well, yeah, actually no, it wasn't the opposite, ignore me, sorry. It's the same thing, the shaft is really small on it. So I've managed to kind of get it through, but on the inside it doesn't have any washers or anything, so it will be prone to kind of spinning round. I've tightened it the best I can in it. Feels solid enough, but yeah, um, I should get that tattooed on my forehead, saying measure twice, cut once, but anyway, it looks cool though. So the neck, I didn't film any of the process of me doing anything to the neck because I'm stupid, but I popped on some locking tuners. These are just from Music Lily. 
Um, their other parts seem quite good quality, so I thought I'd give these a go. And a GraphTech nut. Uh, the frets I did level because they were kind of a bit all over the place. So um, I leveled the frets, polished everything, made it all nice and happy. Stinking cold, so excuse me sounding like Randy Newman. Got my tea, but most importantly, the lovely long shaft parts have arrived. Shafts are maybe a bit too long, but I run more length than not enough. I somehow managed to chip some paint on the cutaway here. I really don't know how I did it. I must have just dropped something on it. But um, the guitar was now wired up, restrung, and ready for a final setup and demo. But one thing was missing from it. Ah, there we go. That's much better. So, during the setup, I ran into an issue. I couldn't set the intonation properly, but why? I made sure the neck had the same dimensions and scales as the original guitar. Big thanks to the Ibanez wiki for that. Maybe the bridge is set too far back? So I replaced the saddle screws with some longer stainless steel ones I had to give me a little bit more room for adjustment. And they ended up looking really, really cool. But it was still not right. So I had a closer look at the original Geo model. Can you spot the difference? Have a closer look. Yep, that's it. My guitar has a big fucking gap between the neck and the pickup. So I have two options here. I either move the bridge closer to the neck, but that would involve filling, redrilling, and refinishing the guitar, and I was not going to do that. So my other option is to remove the neck, chisel out the little part here, fill in and redrill the holes on the neck, and that's it. Much easier in my opinion. I didn't film the process, but I took a few pictures as I went along. There, that's much better. And now the guitar can actually be tuned properly, which is a big, big help.
So what do I think of it? I dig it. It's got exactly what I set out to have on the guitar. I mean, admittedly that list wasn't very long, it was 24 frets and two humbuckers, but that's what it's got. You know, the instrument itself is specked out in a very simple way, but that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted a guitar that's just kind of set to play some heavy metal. That's what I play most of the time. And that's it. It's got one of my favorite necks on it. Simple setup. I think it looks pretty killer as well, but um, yeah, is it perfect? Absolutely not. You know, if it's being crafted by my hands, it is not going to be perfect, and that's okay. You know, this was a learning experience, and not just a learning experience in terms of putting an instrument together. It was a learning experience in you know being genuine and being me and being honest with my flaws and the mistakes I make and you know that's kind of really what this whole thing ended up being for me so uh, yeah um, for those that have stuck around to the end thank you for watching if you enjoy watching things like this I'll put a couple of links up here to other videos of previous past casters or guitars I've put together um, you might enjoy that as well um, but genuinely um, thank you for watching take care of yourselves it's really really important to do that and um you know until next time take care and i'll see you soon thanks <laughs>